Hello, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hello. How are you? How are you all doing? Okay. Now, um, yesterday we stopped um, at um, five chats, I believe. So I have to close so many things here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Give me one minute. Let me close this first. Yeah. I'll close this. All right. Um, can you see the screen for pie chart? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, pie chart is just um, a circular graph where the um, the shape of the set, the size of the sector represents uh, frequency. I'm sure you must have seen this kind of diagram somewhere else before. Um, so, but we use it to uh, present data. In a, in, a, in a pictorial form. <clears throat> so um, now today we're not going to stay too long because um, I have us to take care of a um, uh, lot of uh, grading. Yeah. So for other place, other school where, where I'm teaching, so I want us to use to use that time to review what we have done so far. Uh, then then we, we can continue tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So um, let, me, uh, let me put this in here. All right. So now we have, how do we construct pie chart? How do we construct pie chart? Uh, first of all, the pie chart is based on the uh, theory that the, the sum of the angles of um, a triangle is 360, sorry, of a circle is 360 degrees. So based on that, you use uh, we use um, we get our data, calculate the uh, the relative frequencies, then calculate the angle of measure. Then after that, you can now use what we call a, a protractor. I'm sure you must have heard of protractor. Let me show you um, how, how a protractor would, would look like. Uh, okay, let's see protractor. So that's how it looks like. I'm sure you must have seen this before. Oh, I think I missed it, right? This is how it is. That's how it looks like. So you measure the angles. So you, once you calculate the frequencies, then use this to measure the angles and draw the angles. Then write in the name of uh, whatever is in that sector. Yeah. So. Now, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. This is crazy. What time did the class start? Because uh, I've been waiting since 5.58. I just got in now. I'm starting by 6, 6 p.m. But today, I, I logged in late because I was having to log in uh, with technology issues. So, so okay. I logged in around, around, it's almost just a few minutes ago, I was able to get in. Because I, I just came in right now and I see you already started the class. I started at 6 p.m. But today we started at about 6, 6 7 minutes, 6 07, because I was um, having technology issues. I, I, I couldn't log in at first, but then after repeated attempts, I logged in. So class starts at 6 p.m. every day. All right, that's impressive. Now, uh, if you, since you're just getting in, uh, I was saying before that. Uh, we, we, uh, we will be closing early today because I have a lot, a lot of gradings, including the grading for your class. Yeah, I'm going to do more grade, grading for your class. And also, we are, as you know already, the fall season, we are all in the final exam, final uh, season of the fall. So I'm trying to meet up with both your class grading for the discussion question that you submitted already and the other gradings. Yeah. So, now let's continue. So you first of all you get the frequencies, the relative frequencies. Then you use protractor to measure the angles. Then draw the pi. Draw the pi. Yeah. Now we can try this uh, here. She says number of n degrees conferred in 2007 were shown here. They so use pi to organize the data. 
Okay. So the first thing is to get the total of this. To add all this to get the total. So let me write this down so we can add it. With that, we can now get our, our native frequency. Like at 728, uh, 15, 25, 604, 90, and 60. So adding all this, uh, using our calculator, we are going to get, uh, what is the calculator part? Okay, right here. I have 728. Okay, plus 1525. Yeah, plus 604. Yeah, plus 90. And then plus 60. Now give us 3007. And that is, yeah, so you're gonna write that total and use it to calculate the relative frequencies. As you can see here, you can see the 3,007 right here. So each of this number divided by 3,007 that we just got give us 0.25, sorry, 0.24, which is 25%, uh, sorry, 24%. Now this number divided by 3,007, I, I can show you uh, in the calculator, uh, 1525, for example, um, 15, 25, 25, divided by uh, 3,007 is 0 0.51. Actually, 0.5071. So but if you round it up to two decimal places, you give it 0 0.51. And that you can see it here on the chart. So you can see 0 0.51. So if we look at the same method for all of them, 604 by 3007 is 0.2. Now again, we just I, I just showed you how to how we got the 3007 by adding all this. Now, once you get everything here, next thing is to get the angle. Remember, the angle sum of any circle is 360 degrees. So to get the angle, you multiply each of these answers with 360 degrees. So I can show you where I did it on the table. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, can you go to the previous slide, like the, I think slide three? Go up one more, slide two. Yes, yeah. This point two four, is it to the nearest hundred or to the nearest thing? I can call it nearest hundred or or just just uh, to the smart places. Okay, nearest hundred. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now, you can see right here, each of these answers, you've got 0.24, each of them multiply by 360. 360 times 0.24 give you 86 degrees. 0.51 times 360 give us 184 degrees. So uh, 0.2 times 360 give you 72 degrees. I can show you this with the first example. 0.24, okay. Uh, Point two four times three sixty. See, it is six point four degrees, and you can see it here. Okay, so the, the around it, it was rounded to eighty six degrees. So once you finish getting all the angles, next is to draw your circle. See, draw the circle. You use any any round object to draw the circle and then you measure each angle. For example, angle 86 degrees, you measure it using the protractor that I just showed you. This is how it looks like. You can see if I use this one for, as an example, you can see um, and see all the angles. Let's see if I can move this away, you can see the screen. And see, and so you measure the angle 86 degrees should be around here. It's, this, is 80, this is 80. I mean, if you are going uh, counterclockwise, I mean, it's 0, 10, all the way to 80, 86 should be around here. Now, if you are, if you are going clockwise, I mean, it's going through this way, it's considered 86 is still the same place. So now, you measure it. After measuring it, you draw it. You draw, you draw this, the line that will demarcate that section of the circle. 
um, for 86 is you can present associate degree and see it. So you see, it's associate. So it's, you measure it six, but what you're gonna write there is the percent, not the angle. You just use the angle to get the size of the sector. But what you write there is 54%. Now for 184 degree, measure it. This is for bachelor's degree and it's present each 1%. So you can see the circle right here. Now, this can be interpreted very easily. You can see that majority of the degree is conferred in 2011, was it 2011, I think, let me see. Yeah, 2000, there's a typo, okay, the typo. So the majority of the, the degree uh, awarded in 2007 is, uh, most, most of the degrees were bachelor's degrees followed by associate degrees, and then, you know, a master's. The, last, the, the lowest degree offer that year was a doctoral degree, which is only 2%. Questions? Questions on this? Hello? No. Now, this thing can be done faster in this day of technology. We still have to show you the principle by teaching you this. All right, it can be done faster using Excel. And I'm going to show you in a minute how you can do it with Excel. And hopefully, I have it here. Let me see if I have it here. A pie chart. Uh, let's see, pie chart, pie chart. Uh, OK, see, pie chart. I have this one on this section here, type of degree. Can you see the screen? Yeah. You can see right there. Here, let me make it a little yeah. bit bigger. Right here. So all you have to do is to highlight it. And then since we are going to do an Excel assignment, it's good that you understand these uh, principles. Click on insert, choose the pie. See the pie right there, choose it. And choose this one. So uh, it's, it's not highlighted here for some reason. Uh, it is uh, disabled here. So maybe I'll, I'll take it to another, uh, and I'll open another, Take it at another page so we can draw it. This particular section, it is um, not allowing us to do it here. So I'm gonna uh, probably open a different file. The best is there. Okay. Now I can now try it here. Maybe because there are so many things in those one. Uh, insert. Let me, chart. Let me choose this one then. Okay. Now, for some reason, it's still not uh, highlighted very well. Let me see what is going on here. Okay. I can format it. Now, uh, format data series. So I can choose. Usually it will be hi highlighted here. So you can choose um you already have it. Uh, you can choose any uh, any of this so you can add the percentages. Add chart element, chart title, chart labels. Okay. So because this is this right there. And you can, you can see the bachelors have the light, highest pie. Normally, when you click here, it will show you the percentages to choose from. Okay, also it says the command is disabled. This document has been opened in in compatibility. To, to use this feature, convert your document to a new file by clicking the file tab and clicking, okay, file tab, clicking uh, convert. It's not here. So, what I'm going to do is to open a separate uh, Excel document. Uh, a new totally new one, and then try it there. So I want you to I want, to, I want you to see how um, it is done, and how it is. You can add the the um, the, the percentages. So I'm, cop I'm copying it from here. Try it on the new document I just opened. Uh, this is the new one here. Let me try it here now. Okay, so I highlight it, uh, insert, I choose the chart, 
to this one. Now, as you can see, it can it is showing now. See, it can show now. So I can, I can choose this one here. Sorry, Professor, we can't see the new Excel sheet you just opened. We can go here. Yes, now I'm going to share it. One. Yeah, can you see it now? Can you see it now? Yes, yes. So I open a new one. So uh, it starts the same process. As, as I said, I can add words sometimes. Now you can see that this one is it is highlighted. You can choose any of these options. I choose this one because this one will show me the percentages. So you can see it's right here. So degrees. So the title. I would be degrees of art and 2007. Now, and that's it. So now if you are, if you are writing a project, project, you can copy this and paste in the project. This is, this, is, this is a project, you can copy it and paste it in that project. You uh, say so this is your project, for example. You can go all the way down and paste it wherever I want to paste it, you know. I'm moving out with that because I want to create a space for this stuff that is here. I can paste it here and then type. Right. Oh, excuse me. Okay. And then error, paste it. Then you can type whatever you want to type below it. Uh, according to you know, the pie chart, the pie chart. That's what you want to type about is because this if is, I'm, I'm saying if you are writing a project, for example. Uh, any question on this? Any question? Okay, no question, good. Um, excuse me, Professor. Yep. Is it possible to get the... Um recordings for this uh, class on canvas yes, yes i will thank i'll you, put sir. the recording mm. thank you you're welcome any other question will um professor will yesterday's be uploaded also i was looking for it yeah, i'll upload it here thank you so that's my chat um for you. The next thing is the we're not going to do Pareto chart. You, know, you, you can read it up if you want, but I'm not going to ask you a question on Pareto chart. So there's no point um, going there. What we need now is the um, time series chart, time series, time series graph. So time series graph is um, uh, that it, it shows that are, that, are, that are indexed by time. In uh, you know, in time by time, so entries that are taken at regular interval, so they are indexed by time. So, for example, look at this example. He says the table lists number of cellular phone subscribers for the year 1998 to 2008. Construct a time series chart uh, for the number of um, cellular uh, subscribers. So this this kind of chart, like I said. It should the various data that are indexed by time. So it can show you the trend. Is it, are they going up or going down, you know? So now let me show you how to do this one. Uh, it's very uh, um, easy to do. So um, I have already have this in the uh, um, Excel. So I'm going to take you there so that you can see how I can draw this kind of graph. So uh, you can see, we go there, um, where is our Excel? Okay. This is the raw data here. I hope I have it. Okay, it's this. It should be somewhere. In that case, it might be uh, in the other, uh, workbook, yep, right here. You can see right here. So I can say this is the trend. I can just draw it for these two year and amount of subscribers. 
or year and the beer, average beer. So you can highlight it, uh, insert, then you choose, just choose it. If you choose the recommended, the, um, the um, correct graph, it will give you the trend. You can see the years and the subscribers, see? So yeah, that it shows that up one trend as people who buy who subscribe to cell phone, is the trend is going up since 2000, since 1998. Now you can add, add this, the title cell phone subscribers, subscribers a year. So this is the year. Year. And these are the subscribers right here. Our subscribers, number of subscribers. A number of subscribers. These things we are, we draw it with pencil and pen, but um is since technology have come to stay, so it's better to know how to do it. So not that's even better, it's good to know it how to do it with technology. By me looking at this chart, you can see that this thread is going up, and it's true. People, more people are getting cell phones than before. You know, almost everybody has cell phones these days anyway. And it's like the, the landline is going away. Questions on this? Any question? Is this a line graph? Yeah, you can call it line graph or time series graph, yes. Okay. Um. Yes, Uh. Professor, can you show me what chart, once you did, once you press insert, can you show me what chart you chose for this one? Uh, I was taking notes. No problem. You good. You can take, you can take notes. I like it first, okay? Are you, are you paying attention? Yes, I, I, I'm looking. I was taking, I just didn't see which chart you chose after insert. Okay, get insert, then click here. Okay. I chose this one. Okay. Scattered line graphs. Then you can now add a, you know. And the, this is preparing us for our Excel projects. And this is preparing us for our Excel projects. Yeah, I'm doing do I'm doing Excel. Of course, we could prepare you. Yeah, sure. I, I, when I finish, I show you how to do the same thing using Excel. So that will help you. Yeah. Any other question? Any other question for the class? No. Excellent. So now, now we are finished with uh, data presentation. Now, next thing we do now is what they called, let us look at the shape of distribution, how we interpret the shape of distributions. Okay. So I will take you there now, the shape of distributions. Okay. Okay. Hmm. More, more, more. Okay. Chip of distribution. Now, some distribution have what we call humps or peaks, which we also call modes. For example, look at this distribution here. It has what the tallest bar here is the hump or the peak. So this is what I call what is called the mode. Okay. Um, tap it here. What is the tallest mode? Now I'm gonna show you what is uh, the mode. That's the hump right there. That is the hump right there. See? So the hump or peak called mode. That's the mode right there. So this one have more, more, more. Some distribution are like this. For example, um, this kind of distribution have only one hump. The tall, only one that is the tallest. So we call it a unimodal distribution. Real life example, sales in the restaurant during the, during the lunch time, you know that, that sales in the morning uh, start to increase little by little, 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 then in the, in the lunch time it, it peaked, then it start going down again. I don't want the sales during the Christmas, Christmas so from, from, from the second week of December, sales in the grocery stores like uh, Walmart start going up. But as soon as we reach the Christmas, Middle of almost a week to the, to the Christmas, they will peak and then start going down. See? Now, um, okay. 
Now, the other one is this one. You have um, uh, two, this one have two humps. This is the first hump and the second hump. So we call it bimodal distribution. Example, cells during the lunch time and during dinner time, you know, or cells during Christmas and during Thanksgiving. They go up a little bit, then peak at Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, they go down. Then during Christmas, they, will, they go up again. Then after that, they slow, slow down. So we call it bimodal because it has two humps. Okay. Now, there's one we call multimodal distribution, a distribution that, that have three or more humps. So good example, like things like the um, uh, blood sugar readings of an individual suffering from diabetes. When they take the medication, the blood sugar normalizes. Then after some time, it goes, it, it goes up again or it goes down again, you know, up, up and down. Other one could be, you know, cells. During time, during uh, before Thanksgiving, I think they have uh, veterans. Anytime they have a cell, maybe Veterans Day or uh, Thanksgiving Day, any of those holiday cells, you see that uh, uh, any of those holiday uh, holiday um, observation, you see cells goes up, especially if the stores are doing cells for those holidays, which most of them are doing, mm -hmm. then it goes down. And it goes up again, goes down. So you see multimodal. Another good example is the stock price. Stock price keep going up and down. Now, as a matter of fact, blood sugar goes up and down. When you eat a breakfast, it goes up. Then when you become active, it, it burns them out, it goes down. When you eat your lunch, it goes up again. And then when you eat your dinner, it goes up. So we call it multimodal uh, distribution. We have multiple modes. Okay. Now, uh, there's one that we call uniform distribution. A histogram with um, have no home, it, ha it has no mood. We call it uniform distribution. As for example, suppose somebody is doing a survey and he asks you if you participate, he said that anybody that participates in this survey will receive a $25 gift card. So that's a good example of a uniform distribution. And when you plot it, it might look like this. The first respondent received $25. Second person received twenty five dollar gift card. See, it forms a uniform distribution. Okay. Um, questions on this? Any query? So no questions. Excellent. Good. Now we can then uh, look at skewness and symmetry. Now, let's start with symmetric distribution. This type of distribution is has, uh, this is the type of distribution in which the data values are uniformly distributed about the mean. The mean will be at the center, uh, but they will be uniformly distributed about the mean, just like half of your body, halfway, you know, if you cut your body into half, uh, equal half, they look alike on both sides. We say that such distribution are symmetric. Okay, so okay, can we say they are bell shaped as well? Yeah, they are bell shaped, have a single peak, and tapers at both ends. So we call them symmetric or normal. Okay. You, can, you can see this one here. Pizza delivery times. See, okay. if you cut this, if you cut this from here, if you cut this uh, this chart. On this part here, all the way down, you see that they look almost the same, the same on the left side and the right side. Yeah. Okay. Let's call it a uh, mm -hmm. uniform, sorry, a symmetric distribution. And when you, when you draw the graph, if you if you join the top of each of these, the middle, the top of these uh, history of bars, they form something like this. See, uniform distribution. I mean, uh, sorry, asymmetric. The meaning is at the center. So it's uh, this uniform distribution. I'm sorry, symmetric. Now, 40 minutes, I was 40 minutes window. Have, <laughs> have, uh, we have 10 minutes left now. Okay. Anyway, you get the point. A good example normal heights, height of an adult. If you plot the height of every adult in Maryland, the graph, they'll give you this call. Okay. 
the floor, the, floor, the blood sugar level of every everybody that doesn't have uh, have a normal like doesn't have diabetes that have normal blood sugar, if you plot all of them, they'll give you this curve. I mean, in Maryland, I need to say for the population, not not a sample, but all of them. Now we have one that is called skewness. If one tell of the distribution um, stretches further or further than the other, then the, you say that the distribution is skewed, is skewed to the side of the longer tail. For example, this one is right skewed. Why? Because it, it stretched more on the, the right side. See, it stretched more on the right side uh, than on the left side. It stretched, see? Left side is, is just uh, very steep, but here it stretches more. You can see right here. See, stretches more. A good example, In income is um, always right skewed. If you plot this, let's ask what this is income. You see that those that makes um, with more income, like ten thousand dollars a year, will be more in the population. But those that make millions will be less. See, see the height will be less. So income usually is right skewed. Now this one is left skewed because it's stretched more on the left side. See, stretched more on the left side than on the right side, and that's look at this. Now a good example. If I give you a, an exam that is uh, easy, you will see more people scoring 90s this side and less people scoring 20%. That's the idea of what um, um, right, left skew distribution is. Then outliers, of course, we have some distribution where some things are standing out from the group. We call them outliers. Outliers are, are those extreme values in the data that stand out for the group. Like here, you can see this. there's a space here showing that this is outliers and outliers. They always stand out. Sometimes you might have two outliers. Like here, we have two outliers on the left side on the right side. I'll give you an example. There, there's a neighborhood, there's this neighborhood street that we call North Avenue. You know, most, most people that live in North Avenue have low income, you know, low income. Now, if somebody who is a millionaire lives in North Avenue, he, become a, he or she will be an outlier. I'll give you another example. If I take any of you to a second grade classroom and give an exam, second grade exam, your score will be so high because you're an outlier. Because you know, second graders will be struggling with those uh, questions, but you will excel, you become an outlier. So we have these extreme values that we always, uh, they exist. Uh, any question on this? Where can we find this at? It's not in the files. I can upload this one for you guys. Okay. Yeah, I'll upload it after the class. Yeah. Okay, so also the uh, yesterday lectures is not on the file. It, I found it. Yeah, it's I, called lecture two, frequency distribution. Yeah, lecture two is, well. yeah, is there. Are you talking about the video or the lecture itself? The lecture itself, because what I saw were the frequencies, all these X over Y. That the, yeah, yeah, it's there, lecture two. Uh, so somebody just said that uh, he found it. I'm sure I put I put it there. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll check again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now, um, if this thing caught, uh, I think it will it will cut. Uh, we have only six, five minutes left. Now, remember, remember the process. They haven't fixed it yet. So if we log out, we end this. Wait for ten minutes and log back in. Okay, and then we we continue. Mm -hmm. So that we can. So we come back. Uh, we will begin with uh data uh description uh i think i have it somewhere yeah let me see if i can show more windows yeah we'll come back we'll begin with uh this data descriptions and then do as much as we can before the day ends uh, so i think i'm gonna let you go any question before we leave I can use the opportunity. We still, since we still have five minutes, let me use that opportunity to see if I can upload uh, some of this thing for you uh, in your class. Let's see if I have your class open. Okay, I didn't. So I'm gonna use this to open, upload it for you. What is the website? Okay, well, try it here. Let's see the screen. Okay. I mean, we have four minutes. 
Let me see how fast I can, can move. All right. While I'm doing this, if you have any question, you can ask me. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if this one works. Okay, I'm in. And I'm gonna upload this for you. Uh, shape of distribution to be in the files. So you can use it. Notes. Uh, shape of distribution. Uh, distribution. All right. So here, okay, I think it's there now. You can see it's right. So from what somebody was talking about lecture two, you can see right here. Hello? Hello, class? Okay. So the one okay. I just, is, the one I just no. uh, uploaded is, I see that right ship of distribution is here now. So it's so you have it now. Um we still have three minutes. Any question at all before this minutes ends? Any question? I'm showing the lecture too. Hmm? It won't be enough to, to introduce it properly. <laughs> the time we have. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close it and then we'll, we'll Log back in in 10 minutes. See you back here in 10 minutes, okay? Okay. 